Well, we are waiting for the two or three colleagues coming in. Uh, here's our plan today. We'll have an hour and a half. Uh, I will give a brief two minute introduction. Um, and then uh, Mr. Ross will start. And if you have any questions during the uh, workshop, you can send it to the chat box and uh, I will summarize them uh, and then relay that to uh, Mr. Ross uh, uh, at, at the right time. And um, okay, I think we're almost everybody is here. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you all for coming on Saturday. Uh, and then before I introduce uh, Adam, uh, I, I want to thank Sarah. Uh, some of you know Sarah and uh, she is an uh, exact, executive director of Five Colleges of Ohio. Uh, I want to thank her for her leadership and hard work as you can see. She, she got up early in the morning on Saturday to uh, help us put this together. Um, our thanks also go to the Mellon Foundation for funding these uh, workshops for professional development. Uh, I, I, I know most of you uh, folks, uh, my name is Yahua Bai. I'm serving as the project director for the Ohio Five Mellon Language Enrichment Grant. I, I, I work uh, at Kenyon. Uh, our, our special thanks today go to uh, Mr. Adam Ross uh, to conduct today's uh, workshop. The title is Moving from Emergency Remote Teaching to Successful Blended Instruction in a Foreign Language Program. I think this is very timely. I think one of the few positive things I think out of the pandemic uh, situation is that uh, it really makes us to think about the potential of technology in our business, which is teaching uh, foreign languages. I think uh, I'm so happy that we have Adam here today to uh, share uh, his experiences in integrating technology in teaching uh, foreign languages. Uh, uh, Mr. Adam Ross is one of us. Uh, 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 he has taught the Chinese language for over 30 years and is presently serving as Chinese content and technology specialist at the Chinese American International School in San Francisco. Uh, what uh, he is presenting not only applies to Chinese languages to all the languages uh, uh, we have here at Ohio Five. In the past, uh, he has taught middle and upper school Chinese and Lakerside School in Seattle, Washington, and at uh, St. Catherine School in Richmond, Virginia, as well as university level Chinese at the Uni University of Washington and at a Pacific Lutheran University. So as you can see, he has taught uh, for both college, university, and then uh, pre-college level students. He has led workshops nationally on teaching Chinese uh, and on starting Chinese language programs, as well as on project-based language learning and on the uh, use of digital tools to support language instruction. And I have known uh, Adam for a while and then I attended uh, one of the workshops similar to what he's presenting today. I was so impressed as I, I, I uh, recommended the steering committee. Uh, and so we're happy to have uh, Adam here. Uh, we, uh, the student committee recommended that we limit the participants to 20 people uh, to ensure uh, uh, enough 
discussion, hands-on experiences. So if you find anything interesting, please go home I and mean, go back to your home institution and share with your colleagues. And then this session is also recorded and then we're going to uh, post it on Aho5 and then so that other colleagues can share what we're going to learn today. So, so now uh, I'm going to give the platform to, uh, to Adam. Thank you so much, Professor Bai, and, and thank you, Sarah, for facilitating all of this. And uh, greetings from San Francisco. It's still a little dark out here, but the sun is slowly going to be coming up. Um, very happy to be working with you today. Um, as P Professor Bai mentioned, um, I, I'm primarily a Chinese teacher, but I've done a lot of work in, in integrating technology, and that's actually my role at the Chinese American International School, where I, um, I currently teach and work. Uh, CASE, for short, C-A-I-S, is the oldest uh, uh, Chinese English immersion school in the country. It was founded in 1981, and we teach kids from preschool all the way through eighth grade. And then I'll also add that uh, uh, for several years, I launched and taught an online, a fully online class before the whole pandemic hits for our graduates when they're in high school. So I've been doing th this for, for quite a long time. Um, I'm, let me uh, go ahead and share my screen um, and share my, my PowerPoint with you. Give me one moment here. And go to start. So um, as Professor Bai mentioned, um, I've actually done this talk uh, in a number of different guises. And um, I do plan to make this very interactive and, and actually have some tasks for you. And I actually have a task for you right now. So if you take a look in the chat, I'm about to share a, um, a Padlet with you. So at some point in the next few minutes while I'm talking, feel free to open this up in a separate window. Um, and I'll talk through this a little bit, but some of you might be able to figure it out already. So my talk is, 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 is called From SOS to AOK. -okay. And I say this because when, we, when the pandemic hits, um, all of us, even uh, 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 teachers who had never taught online before, suddenly became emergency remote teachers. Um, and I, I don't know if this is still currently the situation for, for you with your college level students. CASE right now is currently reopening. We uh, just reopened for second grade, having already started kindergarten and first grade. Preschool started at the beginning of the school year. We have sixth grade back, seventh and eighth grade back is coming on, um, on uh, Monday and Tuesday. And then by the end of the month, we'll have the entire school back. But in, in, uh, up until just a couple of weeks ago, everything was fully online from March up, up until the first week of October. So um, what my job has been at, at CASE is to really empower teachers to start using more online tools in their instruction and to do more blended learning. And I'll, 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 ta I'll talk a little bit about what the, the, the concept of blended learning is. And this is something I want you to consider doing for your own classes, whether you're fully online now or already in the classroom or still doing some sort of hybrid. So let's jump right in. So first, first of all, some can-do statements. And I'll talk a, a little bit more about can-do statements um, in, in your own classes in a second. But at the end of this session, um, my hope is that you'll be able to strategize use of, of several digital tools. And I'll introduce the, the ones I'll be uh, talking about today in your either online or, or, or blended formats in your foreign language classes. And then second, I want you to think about how your jump into online learning at whatever stage last spring and the summer even now um, how has it helped to strengthen your own pedagogy and so this is where we have to stop and think I, you know, looking to the future i don't think any of us is going to look back and say 2020 what a great year because that was a year i really bumped up my game to become a better china a better chinese teacher or french teacher or arabic teacher however i i do see a um a real silver lining here we've all had to to go into online teaching and start using online tools in ways that we perhaps never did before. And this is an opportunity for us to, to, to strengthen what we already do and, and to um, use tools that are gonna support students well. So very dark cloud of this year, but silver lining there. And then finally, as I said, this is gonna be an interactive um, uh, uh, webinar. I'm going to be actually giving you some tasks so you can start creating some uh, uh, some lessons or just even short uh, uses of, of uh, 
Padlets and such that you may be able to use in classes that you're already teaching. So that's a that's a hope and at least a, giving you some tasks that, that you may have something that you can even start using on on Monday if, if you are teaching a class right now. And then I uh, also want to point out, and I'll, I'll, I'll open up these later, um, that I will often reference the necessful, actful, can-do statements. And as language teachers, when I'm a presenter, I always want to say, here are the things that you'll be able to can-do. When you are doing any kind of language lesson, you'll want to think about what are the can-do statements that, that you want your students to be doing. And then similarly for this workshop, when you're considering using a tool for a lesson, you need to think about what is the can do that you want your students to do. This may be something really simple and just simply write a sentence to fill in the blank. But um, this will help guide you in terms of using these tools well and not just simply having this as a, as a bell and whistle, a cool tool that doesn't necessarily forward your, your students' um, uh, 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 language functions, depending on what you're trying to do. Okay, so let's move forward. So let's think back a little bit. Um, in the in the past six seven months, what has worked well with distance learning, if anything? Okay, maybe things didn't work well. It was a, it was a total mess, but my guess is that some things did work well. And when I think about um, our teachers at Case, uh, first of all, everyone has become really proficient at, at, at screencasting. We've done lots of asynchronous videos. In other words, videos that, that students can watch at home at their own time, not necessarily live in a class. And for this, we've used tools like Screencast-O-Matic, Screencastify, Loom. There's all sorts of, of free tools. I'm not going to be talking about the, these, as I'm assuming you, you've probably used them a little bit. And then we're all using web conferencing tools. Everyone Everyone is on Zoom now. Some some schools may be using Google Meet, and there's there's other tools. Uh, um, I'm blanking right now. The other one that's called um, anyway. We all have have been using this for better or for worse. Sometimes there's a little backlash here. Where we're maybe a little tired of Zoom, but we all know how to use it at this point. Okay, students can start managing their own learning because. The students are at home, they have to take charge of things. And this has been more important for our students because suddenly we've had to teach kindergartners and first graders to manage some of their, 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 their things, obviously with parents' help, but they're, they're learning to do these sorts of things. College students, this is a little easier for them. But, but regardless of the grade level of student, whether it's a kindergartner or a junior in, in, at, at Kenyon College, um, students have more voice and choice in terms of what they're doing because they have to manage their own learning. They can choose things that they would want to share about themselves and using tools and, and things like that. And um, at least with our school, we took a, we decided not to do any grading through the remainder of the, of the spring semester. And this meant that for our language classes, our Chinese classes, the teachers really focus on developing our students' skills without worrying about grading. And this was actually a, a real burden off our seventh and eighth graders who, at least at our school, ever are quite worried about their grades and getting into good high schools. So think of for yourself, what would you add to this list? What has worked well in your own online um, learning experience? And feel free to, to share in the chat. Now, I'm going to stop here for a second and um, check in with you. I'm going to stop share. I shared that Padlet with you, and um, I wanted to see if any of you were able to, to start posting anything. And I haven't seen anyone posted anything. So, oh no, it, it didn't load. It, it hadn't loaded in my little um, my little thumbnail. But but thank you for sharing. And so this is something that that you may want to consider doing for your own classes. I often use Padlets as warm up activities before even students come in, or um, even if you're starting a Zoom session, share the Padlet and say, okay, we're waiting for people to come in, answer a question in your target language, and you've done so here in terms of talking about you want to have more hands on use or compare some new tools and and such. Um, but but consider ways that you could use a Padlet just simply as a as a quick warm up. And I'll um, later on I'll I'll share some um, some examples of this. So feel free to keep on adding to this. This is meant to be a, a document that we can keep on using. And again, in any um, online class, I, the teacher, am talking. All of you are as students sitting there listening. But you can still give tasks that people can work on well well. Um, uh, listening at the same time. Okay, back to my presentation. Let me, give me one sec to switch. So Adam, here are two comments to your last question. Sure. Uh, Discussion-based literature courses worked well on Zoom. 
uh, discussion boards are working well for me. Participation in small groups in breakout rooms and discussion boards. So those are the, the three things uh, added to a list of what is working. Terrific, thanks for sharing. Sorry, I just shared my wrong screen. Let me try that again. Okay, there we go, back to my PowerPoint. Okay, um, feel free to type questions in the chat and I'll actually stop it at, uh, at, at different points if you wanna actually speak up and, and ask a question directly too. Okay, so looking to the future, I'm going to make a guess, and this is again our, our silver lining uh, working here, that blended learning may become the norm for language classes at this point. So here's our definition of blended learning. Um, blended learning is an education program that, that combines online digital media with traditional classroom methods. It requires a physical presence of both teacher and student, so we're in a classroom space, with some element of student control, and this is again this, the student voice and choice piece over their, their time spent on work, the place they do this, the path, or the pace of their own, own learning experience. This is where we're using uh, tools to empower students to take more control and manage these things a little bit more. Um, learners are engaged in a variety of content types. So if you're thinking, for example, of your, your literature class, you're engaging in the content of reading a work of literature, but then you're also engaging in a discussion forum. And that discussion forum may be text, or there's actually ways of doing discussion forums in, in, with voice as well. And so that there's uh, ways of doing interpersonal tasks, both with speaking and with writing for, for these sorts of things. Um, opportun there's opportunities for differentiating learning. This is really important for, for us working at case with younger students um, and then allowing students more choice in what they want to do. It extends learning outside the classroom. And this is the most important thing, especially for us at Case as an immersion school. We want kids to be using Chinese more than just simply 80 minutes a day in our middle school classes, or we're 50-50 in our lower school. We still wanna give kids um, uh, chances to use their Chinese uh, when they're at home uh, to, with speaking tasks or more reading tasks. And then more ways for learner engagement, reflection, feedback in both synchronous and asynchronous ways. And then in, in any kind of online class, you wanna have time like we're doing right now, we're synchronously meeting with each other, but then also have tasks where, where, where uh, students or participants can engage in, in tasks at their own time. And then um, my when I first, Put together this presentation i was doing this in june i would think that that blended learning is going to be the primary mode for many schools in fall 2020 and this has become uh, the case for case for for my own school we're we're moving into a uh, a a fully classroom based uh learning mode for our k through five students however our middle school students we're going to have a one day on one day off um, mode where one day half the class will, will come so that we can have socially distanced classrooms while the other class will, will be at home doing asynchronous learning. It'll be a truly blended or we're calling it a hybrid learning moment. Okay, so just to summarize, so blended learning is taking teacher-led learning that's usually happening in a classroom environment, a traditional classroom, with online learning. And then there's there's various ways that this may, may, may come out. Um, and, and again, my guess is that at your various colleges and universities over in Ohio, you're probably already working in these modes. So um, I'll stop here real quick and just check any questions about blended learning or comments about this. There's one more comment, which is uh, 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 related to, the, the, to what you have talked about in terms of this, the advantages of, uh, of blended learning. Here's a from Professor Miguel. He says, using Google Docs for showing learning in real time, students complete activities uh, there well in breakout rooms and then showing to other people. So that's another good example to add to your idea of blended learning. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. I, I absolutely, Google Docs and, and actually the whole G suite of, of, of activities, for example, Google Forms are, are wonderful tools to, to support all of this. And of course, I'm gonna be talking about Jamboard as a fairly new addition to the G suites in a little bit. Yeah, here's another uh, comment from Professor Cynthia Potter. I have been using Google Suite to merge different forms of media and the interaction uh, in the parameters examples, Google Sites, 
video embedding discussion forum calendar uh, sync, uh, syncing. Uh, another common question here uh, from Christine, how would you define high flex learning in the position to blended learning? So I'm actually not, I'm not familiar with with the term high flex learning, although I can maybe find later there's a definitely a continuum of, of different levels of blended learning moving from from the one end of traditional classroom learning only to fully online and then between that. Um, in, in terms of, of the way that, that you would want it to to uh, uh, to design your, your class. Um, I would assume that you want to give many of your students the the flexibility to complete tasks in ways that are going to support them, especially if if you if, if uh, your students are, are practicing distancing. Um, but then consider, for example, MOOCs, massive open online classes. These are primarily um, courses that have been already designed and have a, a little bit of of um, uh, opportunity for students to participate, mostly in terms of discussion forums, but they're a little bit more restricted there. And I'm thinking that High Flex would give uh, more opportunities for for feedback from you as a teacher. And then my hope is showing these tools um, uh, that I'm going to talk about today will show how you're going to strengthen going above and beyond what a MOOC can actually do, which is something that's a, that's much more interactive. Okay, let me move on. And I just realized I didn't quite do my, uh, my animations correctly here. But here are the tools we're gonna to be talking about today. So I'm gonna be focusing on, um, on Flipgrid and Padlets as, our, our, as two main tools, spending a good amount of time there. I added Lino as a free tool that's similar to Padlet, but doesn't work quite as well. And I'll talk about this. And then, as I mentioned, that we'll take a look at Jamboard as a, as a new Google slash G Suite tool. And then a brand new tool, exam.net, that I just discovered a, a few months ago. And I can show you some um, uh, one potential uh, application for it and some ideas that you may, may use for it. So let's jump into Flipgrid first, because for, for me, this is um, an extremely powerful tool. It has been made free for all educators with a grant from Microsoft. And it, if it facilitates speaking and, and in language classes, unless you're a teacher of a dead language like Latin or ancient Greek, language has to be a spoken tool first before we move into um, reading and writing tasks. So we use this all the time with our older kids, at least from sixth, sixth seventh and eighth uh, grade primarily, but it can be used in a variety of ways. And I'll show you how I've, I've used it with, with adult learners. So, so I'm gonna repeat again, back to the can do statements. What can do's do you want in mind? Um, what do you want your students to demonstrate when you are, are using Flipgrid as a tool. And I'll even show a series of Flipgrids that may be moving students toward um, a higher level of performance than their incoming proficiency might be at. And this is where like, the can-do statement will, will be helpful in designing your Flipgrids. Using Flipgrid, um, you can. Uh, it's a powerful tool for giving feedback back to students. And you can give feedback in the form of video comments, you can do text comments, and they've recently made it easier for other students to actually comment as well. So you can have peer to peer feedback as well. Again, really powerful for developing that collaboration and this with an online tool. Um, I highly recommend that whenever you, you create a Flipgrid that you create a video of yourself. And this is something that I have to train my own teachers at um, at case, often they just simply type type a question and post it, and it's easy and done. But we want to model as as teachers that we're going to be going outside of our comfort zone and looking directly at the camera and talking to people, and then it, it gives motivation to your students. Oh, there's my teacher talking to me. Okay, now I'm going to do something back. And then similarly, by creating a video speaking only in the target language or you know using English as, you know um, uh, uh, very judiciously to give instructions of, of what you want to do you're pr providing yet more opportunities for inputs and consider if you're giving an instruction in the classroom you say it and you and you may have to repeat yourself and then after you've said it the kids have to have to start working or your college students have to start working and they may have forgotten what you've said for someone at home 
Um, if you're speaking the target language, they can go back and listen to it two, three, five, ten times as many times as they need to 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 get um um to get what they need from it. And I'm going to give an example of me speaking in Chinese. The Chinese teachers will have no problem understanding me, but I'm going to see if you if those of you who don't speak Chinese can get what I'm saying and 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 demonstrate that. And then, um, as I mentioned already. Think to go beyond uh, using Flipgrid just to answer a simple question and then move on. Think of ways that you can have sequences of topics. And this is something that Flipgrid has just changed. They used to call these grids, which was a little confusing, but having a topic or a suite or a sequence of Flipgrid tasks where after you, you complete task one, then you move on and do task two that may increase the level of difficulty or um, model what you might be doing in a conversation so that it's, it starts to model a little bit of an interpersonal style. And so that Flipgrid is not just simply for presentational tasks. So um, as I um, start showing you some of the things that I've done, take on, on a sheet of paper um, or in your own little notepad window or, or Google Doc or whatever you have, jot down some things that you might want to do as I'm talking. Start brainstorming and share in the chat as well as, as I'm talking. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing here again and switch back to my browser. So give me one moment to do this. One sec, and here we are. And in a moment, I'm going to share th this. Oh, wait a second. I need to get to my right screen. Okay, can everyone see the Mellon workshop with the, the, the Golden Gate Bridge? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so this is the flip grid that I have um, uh, um, created for you. And I'll give you uh, in a moment uh, the link so that you can have it on your um, on your device, and I'll have all of you give a response to this. So what I have here is I've created my own video, a very short video with a question, and then to give a response, all you have to do is cr is click on the, this button. Oh, um, oh, I may have made a mistake. You, you may have to join with Google. Okay, so if you have a Google account, go on in here. One thing that Flipgrid has done in the past year is to, rather than have passwords, have to have people log into either a Microsoft account or a Google account. So we'll see if this works for you. Um, and then go ahead to record an answer for this and we'll see if it works. Um, and I'll, I'll come back to this in a moment. But in the meantime, I wanna share some other examples of Flipgrids that I have, 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 have done. Okay, so when you create a, um, a Flipgrid, you will have a, um, a, a admin page where you can manage all of your topics and have links to share and then actually go in and, and give responses. So here's when I actually created the task. This is what it'll, it will look like on my end when your responses come in. But let me show you some, some examples of, of what I've already done already. And Actually, I'm going to stop share for one sec. I forget if I turned on the sound. Sometimes I, I do have uh, share computer sound, so I want to make sure I have that. Okay, back to share again. And um, let me show you a couple flip grids that I've already produced for people. So here's an example of what I actually taught a class concurrently for case parents who are in preschool or kindergarten to learn a little Chinese so they can work with their kids, and then also a class for faculty. And then I tried to do something interactively where I paired a faculty member up with a parent and said, I want you to just ask each other some basic questions. And they're, they're just learning from zero. They're, they're using some memorized chunks. What's your name? What do you do? Are you a teacher? Just some basic phrases and to and to engage in this. And, and I gave them instructions, created a Flipgrid for each of them and told them to go ahead and record themselves. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and open and here's Gustavo. Ni hao, Kaisi. Wishu, get shuashen. Nishu, na wuren. Okay, were you able to hear that okay? Professor Bai, did you hear the sound? Yes, yes we can. Terrific. Okay. So um, if, you, if you don't speak Chinese, Gustavo is saying, um, hi, I am a student. What, um, what is your nationality? 
And then if we go down, actually, it wasn't in this video, it was in one of the next ones, Cassie replied to him. Oh, is this one here? Okay, I picked the wrong one. Okay, so he just said, hi, uh, my name is Gao Rui uh, the, the, the Chinese name I gave him. And they said, thanks. And then Cassie replied, and here she's, she took a, a screenshot with her son, who's um, himself a case student. Okay, so, and she replied, oops, she replied, hi, I'm a teacher. Um, what about you? And she spoke pretty well. She had a little tone error. She said, I'm an honest washer lao shi instead of washer lao shi, but that's okay. She's a novice level speaker coming from zero, practicing using the language and then doing an interpersonal level task, even having just learned Chinese for a week or two. Okay, so practicing at home and then perhaps even having her son listening as well. And it's like, oh, how funny to hear mom um, speaking Chinese here. So there's one example of, of starting with, with people who have no Chinese and you're actually able to um, get them to, to be using language right away. Okay, so I promise you, here's an example of a video where I presented some information to the parents. I had already done some of this in class. Now I want you to listen. And for those of you who know no Chinese, see what you get out of this, okay? Again, knowing that I, I'm speaking only in Chinese for novice level learners, all novice low level learners speaking only in Chinese. Here we go. 大家好,我是黄老师,我要告诉你们,我姓黄,可是我不喜欢黄色,黄色我很不喜欢,不喜欢黄色,可是我告诉你们,我喜欢的颜色,我很喜欢黑色。这个沙发黑色我很喜欢你看我的背心也是黑色的还有呢我也很喜欢红色你们看这把椅子是红色的我的衬衫也有黑色和红色我很喜欢那个黄色哦黄色我不喜欢好请你们告诉我你喜欢
taking some time to make my video, giving them more comprehensible inputs, um, sometimes going above and beyond what they can understand, but giving them some, some hints, making it interesting so that, that the, the task feels like, okay, while Alshir has done a 53 second video, I can take 16 seconds and, and do my video and then reply. Okay, let me move and share another one. Um, so this, um, actually, I'm gonna come back to this one. Let me go to this next one. Um, this is an example of a Flipgrid where I am talking to seventh grade students at the beginning of a year where we had a, uh, a very short unit talking about responsibility. We want our seventh graders, you know, they're in middle school for their second year. They're not just new sixth graders. You need to start taking more responsibility for your learning and, and making good choices and all of these things here as a seventh grader. And it's a, it was a very open-ended discussion and ask them to talk about and what are some of the ways that you take responsibility. And as it turned out, the kids are start talking about chores. And so, okay, all right, we'll make chores the, the subject of our discussion. And that's what I made in the Flipgrid. So I was using student voice and choice to determine how this discussion would go. And then in my video, I won't play the whole thing. I say, here are the, th the types of chores that I do. And I talked about that at my home, I take care of the cooking, I like cooking. Whereas my husband, um, he, likes doing laundry. I hate doing laundry. I hate ironing. So he's um, uh, happy to do that. And that's how we divide up the chores. Then I say to the kids, now tell me about yourselves. Okay. And then um, here we are in, in with their answers. Now what the kids see is this. I'm going to go ahead and, and open this up. And here's the flip grid. And then when, when they start posting, their posts will come in one by one. Tyler, um, this was two years ago, was uh, one of the, actually, it's kind of come backwards. Uh, I have to go back, uh, it's changed the order. But it was actually Julian posted first, and then Trevor, and then Nicholas, and then McCall, and Maxwell, and so on. And, um, and then the students can actually listen to each other before they answer. So they're able to, to, to first, uh, uh, I don't know what to say, they can get some ideas from each other first. And I say, feel free to listen to each other, but you can't copy each other's answers. You can't just simply listen to someone and then repeat the same thing. You need to create um, your own answer. You can see some kids uh, have some fun by posting other pictures. Some kids don't like to be on camera, so they just put a color. Chelsea added some emojis and such. Um, and it's, it's a fun tool for them. Now, I'm gonna I'll play a couple um, answers and I, I, I'm choosing Marina and very quickly, she she says. Uh, 我每天晚上负责给我的猫吃饭, okay, so she starts talking about you know feeding her pets and so on, um, and then I said, well, you didn't quite talk about all, all other things that you can do, and I gave her that level of feedback. So she also had the opportunity to go back and record a second video, and I said, you know, feel free to add more videos if you need to to to, to show more. And so she came up with a second. Okay, she had to talk about what was her favorite thing and why does she like doing this most. And she went uh, further to, to not just simply say, I like doing this and I like doing this. I like doing this because, and then to add on. And my, my I, I forgot to mention my, my can-do statement is that, the, uh, that our seventh graders are intermediate level speakers. So I want them to be able to create sentences, but then also have a sequence of connected sentences to and to talk further, to go beyond just simply answering in just one sentence to, to maintain that intermediate level speech. And then eventually even giving them some advanced level tasks um, as they became more familiar using, using Flipgrid. Okay, um, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm doing a lot of talking and I have some other examples to show, but I want to just check first if people have questions about using Flipgrid at this point. And if not, I'm going to try to share um, this Flipgrid. Hold on one sec, I'll just put this copy there. I'm gonna put this in the chat and see if this will work for you. See if, uh, take a minute or two, make sure that you are muted and see if you can give a response to my question. So we'll take a 
two minute break to see if you can complete this and then I will share responses as they come up. Quick check in, give me a thumbs up if you're able to get into the Flipgrid, either by logging in if you're Google or Microsoft. Thank you so much, Ivana. I see you got a thumbs up. Thank you so much. So take 10 seconds and just add your own response and post it onto the Flipgrid. Okay, I'm going to go back and share my screen and see what we've got here. Hooray, I've got one response, two responses, yay. Okay, some of you may still be doing this, but here's the, the next step I want, want, want to do. Um, it, let me just check first. Ivana or Monica, are, 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 are either of you okay with me playing your video for everyone to listen to? Is that okay? Just go ahead and unmute if you're okay with that. Yes. I, I'm sorry, uh, Ivana, thank you so much. Okay, I haven't listened to this. This is hot off the presses. Let's see what Ivana had to say. Hello, I don't understand any Chinese, but I can say ciao. Okay. Ciao, Ivana. Grazie molto. I, I speak a little Italian too. I, I, my, my mother was Italian. I was thinking American. about transitioning an oh, activity that I. Oh, sorry. I was thinking thing about transitioning. You, and sorry. One thing is when you start clicking them, it'll start playing them all the way through. Okay. So here's what I can do next. And this is an important tool as a, as a teacher. Um, I can go ahead and give feedback. Oh. Hello, I don't know. I'm going to stop here. Now I can add a text comment or I can add a video comment. Okay, but I want to send a video comment first. Okay, so oh, I have to join in with Google. Okay, so I have to log in on myself. I'll use my case account. I'm, I'm logged in. Okay, and now here I'm working as teacher recording an answer to Ivana. Okay, so I'm gonna practice my Italian a little bit. Okay, so three, two, one. Uh, grazie molto Ivana, sono molto con contento che uh, 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 le ha uh, imparato un poco di cinese. Grazie, grazie. Okay, I stop, I hit next. I can edit uh, this. Grazie molto. It'll play it back for me. I'm happy with it, what I've done. I'll hit next. I can take a selfie. Okay, one more selfie. Cheese. Okay. Oh, wait, I didn't click right. One more time. Cheese. There we go. Confirm. Done. And when I confirm this, the video will be uploading and I've created a video feedback to Ivana. And this, this is, I think, is a really powerful thing. First of all, as a teacher, I like... I, I hate having to type in Chinese. It takes me a long time, but but doing this in Chinese, I can give students individualized feedback uh, very quickly. Um, but but I could also write a written comment, and this will feel your students will feel like, wow, my teacher really cares about me. Adam got to show off, you know, how multilingual he is by speaking a little Italian, blah blah blah. Um, but but do these sorts of things. So. Um, go ahead and listen to each other's responses and then maybe even write a text comment, you know, given that you're listening to me right now to, to, to see, how, um, see how well this works. Okay, um, let me check the chat. Any, um, there were a few questions I saw that came in um, and Professor Bai, I can open up the chat too. So um, Nausicaa um, 
asks, can it be integrated to a learning management system? Yes, it can. However, it works a little easier if you provide the direct link uh, because of the, the sign-in protocols that you have. So often what I do in my own learning management system is I'll have the, I, I, I even remember having that picture of me in front of the yellow lockers and then having the direct link so that, 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 that the parents and, and faculty could go directly into it. But it does work well to put it into an LMS. How long does Flipgrid store the submitted files? Is, in perpetuity. I have Flipgrids from years ago that I still have there and you can even recycle. And again, with this, with the, with the color video, I've used the same video from two years ago um, in repeated classes I've done with, with adults. Um, yeah, Lisa says Safari not supported. I, I find in general for most of these tools, the Chrome browser is the most stable um uh to, to support the uh, to support these things so if you if you're using safari safari is a little touch and go with a lot of these these tools um can you delete or revise a video later absolutely um and uh and you, would you use Flipgrid for oral exams? You can. You, you can actually um, create settings so that you are not sharing the videos, but they're private only to you, or you release them only after um, uh, you, you've reviewed it. You can, depend, you can decide um, how you want to share this. Uh, you could even have um, a, a quick uh, a quiz, for example, and then share the answers uh, um, or, or not share the answers, share everyone's video so people can go and listen to each other's possible answers. It's, it's very, very flexible that way. Okay. Um, okay, so um, it's 747. And so I want to move on to other tools, but but consider, you know, ways that you can use use Flipgrid. And I don't know, and, and, and go ahead and, and share in the chat some of the things that you might want to use Flipgrid for um, moving forward. Okay. I'm going to switch back to my PowerPoints. And then move on to our next tool. So we've already started to use a Padlet and you, you've already showed me some of the goals you have for this. So um, consider when you're using Padlet how um, you are going to monitor student content um, because students can post anonymously. And, and let me also mention that, um, that one great feature of Padlet is that students don't need to have an account. They don't even need to have a, um, a Gmail or a Microsoft account. Once you provide a link, anyone can post to that Padlet. But however, that, that means that anyone can start typing whatever they want in there. So you do have to monitor. So I just say this in, in case, I mean, I work with middle school students, sometimes middle schoolers might want to post something that's a little bit naughty. General, generally, they're pretty good about it, but you have to look to see what they're posting. Um, and so if you have a disgruntled college student, it would be easy for them to post an anonymous content, uh, anonymous comment, and you wouldn't know what, what's, uh, what's going um, in there. So familiarize yourselves with the tools to manage postings, whether you want to um, review the post before it, it's posted, or you're, you're happy with your class and you trust them and they can just go ahead and post. When students post a Padlet, find other ways to extend tasks to elicit more language use. Um, so uh, I just gave an example of having uh, uh, creating creating fl uh, flip grids, for example, where you might ask your your students to respond to each other, and I showed that with Gustavo and, and Cassie. We'll look at some examples where you can do extensive um, activities using Padlets. Padlet, unfortunately, is not free. I'm talking about it now because when you open up a new account, if you don't already have one, you can have, a, a, last time I checked it, up to three free Padlets. And what you could potentially do if you don't want to purchase is create a Padlet, use it, and then blank it, and then reuse a Padlet for something else. Um, but I'm also guessing too that you are at colleges and universities and have robust support for these tools. So talk to your IT department if you need to purchase a, a, a tool for this. So as I, as I show examples of this, do the same thing. Start thinking about ways that you would use Padlet in your own lessons. And I already used Padlet for this session as a warm-up activity for us. I'll show you some warm-up activities I've used in my, in my classes. This might be something just simply fun to do um, with your students, again, either online or even in a traditional classroom, you can say, you know, to your, your students walking in and their socially distant spaces, open up your, your, um, your, your computer, I've already emailed you this link or the link is already in our LMS, take a minute or two to answer this question before we start class formally. 
Um, let me move on as well and show I'm also sharing um, Lino as another tool. It's similar to Padlet, and I'll, I'll show you a page, just a simple playing around with page. This is entirely free. You don't have to purchase it. And if you wish to use Lino as just as a bulletin board where, where people post things, and Lino is a little different in that you're posting as sticky notes, um, it, it's, a, it's a free tool and easy to use. However, I haven't used it much in recent years because it's become buggy. With Padlets, you can post pictures, you can post uh, even videos. When I tried to post a, a, a picture in Lino, it, it, I had to do it a couple times. It wasn't taking. And then finally, the third time, it, it uploaded. And if, if a tool takes that much work, I, I don't want to use it. I want the tool to be easy to use, or I'm going to be frustrated with it, and your students will be the same. Okay, but for just sticky notes and, and dis discussion forum bulletin boards, it works fine. And it has an, a nice tool to highlight posts that I'll show you in a second. Okay, back to another switch to my browser to show you what Padlet looks like. Um, okay, let me get to my right screen. Hold on one moment. Okay, so, all right, so everyone see this, someone's up early. Hi, Adam, and this is my dashboard. Give me a thumbs up if you see that. I wanna make sure you're seeing what I'm seeing. Great, thank you. So um, uh, I have a paid account for Padlet, so you can see that I have tons and tons of Padlets that I've used over, over the years. And I, I created one, uh, you know, just for our goals, and we, we've just seen that already. Okay, so there's that. Here are some other things. Um, that we, I've been using it for. So here's a warm-up activity I use for an eighth grade Chinese class that I was subbing for for, um, for a couple weeks. And um, in eighth grade at the start of the year, this was two years ago, we were talking about stress, okay? Very timely topic for, for students, especially eighth graders thinking about moving on to high school. And um, in Chinese, um, I just simply said, how do you reduce stress? How do you reduce your, 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 your school stress? And I said, just go ahead and, 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 and input your own one line here. And so the students walked into class, I said, go ahead, post your name, and, you, and this won't be uh, um, immediately apparent for you non-Chinese readers, but you can see all of the posts here, except for a couple, Kate Xiao had her own ac account. So when she logged in, it was showing herself, same thing with, with McKenna, but the majority of students were just logging into the Padlet and posting. So I, I asked them, please remember to add your name in the top bar. So uh, this was Ella Lee, Leijer, Leijer, Un in Chinese, and then she wrote, um, "Before I, I read before I go to bed. This is one way I, I get rid of, of the stress of having done homework for the evening. Or um, uh, she actually came up with two. She, 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 she uh, posted one here and then posted a second. Um, I chat with my friends, okay? So they're just popcorning out answers, but sharing this way. Um, and then uh, some some kids were actually writing a little bit more. So actually, this is this is the same student again. She's done several answers, so she's had some time to think a little bit. And then Ella wrote um, in not not quite perfect Chinese, but that's okay. Um, it would be nice if teachers gave students less homework. That would reduce stress. Okay, and this we can have more time to uh, prepare for our exams and have more time to. Um, to, to take breaks or to, to relax. And then McKenna actually re replied to her and that this is the next step. So I said, go ahead and, and add some replies if you've done uh, uh, sharing your resp responses. And then McKenna is like, and yeah, give us chocolate too. Chocolate will, will reduce stress. So they were having fun with this, just simply popping up, uh, popcorning out answers as they went along very simple activity as they were doing this. And you can see that there are a whole bunch here. And then as a follow-up activity, we, we, we just, I, I displayed this on, on my Apple TV screen and we just read through some of these together. And as I was going along, I would um, you know, make little corrections. Um, so when, she, when 
McKenna said, "Gay Sui Sheng Shao Gong Ke." Um, she had a word order problem, and I would would have said, "Shao Gay Sui Sheng Gong Ke" is a better way of, of saying this. I would make a little correction so he, so students would hear things, and understanding that you know, Ella, sorry, you're so dumb for doing this thing. Common error. I, I made this error a lot myself, and and made it very low stress for them. So here's ways that we extended using this Padlet to engage in discussion, do some error correction, have students um, follow up with other. Um, uh, other topics. And this actually helped to gain um, uh, the discussion. I, I didn't video record it, but if you think, if you just, uh, if you didn't use a Padlet and you started a class, okay, everyone, tell me how you're going to, how you reduce stress. And even if I do this right now, I say, okay, everyone, unmute and tell me how you're going to reduce stress. We'd probably sit here for 30 seconds before people had the the, the courage to do so. But by having thought a little bit, by getting the, the mental juices going, the, the kids were ready to go and start talking more readily. Um, by, by having, you know, they just come from an English class or moving into Chinese, they have to kind of switch gears into the, into the other language. And this is helping them in this way. Okay, let's move on to some other examples. Um, he, here are some advanced level examples. So this is actually from my online class for our case graduates in high school. And what I did is I um, assigned them to watch several episodes of a Chinese serial drama, essentially a soap opera um, that, was, um, that was filmed in Vancouver, Canada. Um, so it had this you know, uh, North American Chinese element to it. And at, at, at different points, I, I said, watch this 20 minute section. And then I want you to come into class and be able to narrate what was happening. So thinking to my can-do statements, this is uh, a class getting our intermediate high level speakers, our, our case graduates leave at eighth grade with a benchmark of intermediate high, giving them advanced level tasks to say, be able to narrate in different time frames with beginning, middle, and end various things. And to do this, I, I assigned different tasks. You, you can see that Padlet very nicely allows me to create different columns. So here's column one. And I say, narrate um, in this scene where Lawyer Kong, um, uh, let me read this, um, how, how the bad guy, Yu Zong, um, made uh, Lawyer Kong be willing to help him out. And you don't have to think very hard. He pulls out a wad of cash. Even though it's in Canada, he's pulling out a lot of American cash and lawyer Kong might be willing to help him out. And here, my student He Song Ming had to write a paragraph against thinking, uh, getting my students to do an advanced level writing task, writing a full paragraph about what happened based on their listening of their uh, of the video. So I'm engaging students in a number of different ways. They're watching a video online where they're using their inter, um, interpretive skills. Then they have to do a presentational task where they're writing this. And then when we actually come into, into class, um, I have a task for five different students to say, okay, um, Song Ming, can you describe to everyone exactly what happened between the bad guy and lawyer Khan? And so he would then um, had to re not read what he had here because he's, he's already written, written it out. He should have it in his head. He should be able to start speaking through in a paragraph level chunk of language in class to describe this. So I'm, I'm engaging students in, in different ways just by using a Padlet tool to prepare for this activity. And then um, other students do the same thing. Um, Song Ming has a, had a, had a um, twin brother, Song Ping, and so his, his brother did the next scene and then other students continued with other scenes and we, would have, we had a 15 minute discussion, students roughly three minutes each to describe what happened here so we can clearly understand what happened in that 20 minutes of, of the Chinese soap opera before we moved on to another task. So, so there's something from moving from intermediate level eighth grade tasks, warm up tasks to something that's a, a little bit more involved. Um, um, if you remember when I showed the Flipgrid and I showed you the, the, the video of Marina talking about her chores, I also had kids doing um, uh, intermediate level tasks talking about their chores writing sequences of sentences. They're approximately, approximately getting to, to paragraphs, but we're, we're still at the beginning of the year, it's September, we're just getting kids back in the swing of things. 
um, and just write a sequence of, of sentences about the chores that they, they, they do so that they're practicing their oral skills and then following up by practicing their, their written Chinese skills as well. And then with this task, I've also given students the task, and you can see I've opened up here. It's just anonymous for now. I said, just find uh, three or four people and write a comment um, uh, responding to what they said. The task was, was tell us um, a, a, a chore you do, how often you do it, how long it takes you, and whether or not you like this chore or not. And then the kids would respond, oh yeah, I agree with you. Uh, you know, this is a, a task that, that's easy to do and I like it, or, oh, I don't really agree. I think this is the most boring task in the world and so on. So th this is increasing the opportunities for, um, for interpersonal exchange here in a written form at this time. So you're using Flipgrid for interpersonal tasks in terms of speaking. Now we're doing in person, uh, excuse me, interpersonal, not impersonal, interpersonal writing tasks via, um, via the, um, uh, the Padlets. And I just made this as a uh, interpersonal test among the students. I didn't take time to, to, to give feedback, but I could do so as well. And they actually show me Adam Ross, because I'm logged into my account, the then the students could see, oh, this is the, the teachers uh, speaking to me. Uh, but you can see that again, some students, Ella Aiken had her own account, so she's showing up herself. Other students are showing up as an uh, anonymous. So this is a, another thing that you may want to tell your students. You may want to have them always identify themselves or you may want them to create their, their own Padlet account so you can actually track who is, who is doing what um, in terms of, of, of the, these exchanges. Okay, um, let me stop here and see if there's any, um, any questions right now. Let me take a look at the chats. I think there are some comments uh, for your last question uh, at, at the end of the Flipgrid discussion. Uh, one question was, what are the advantages over discussion boards in LMS? This is about uh, the Flipgrid. Uh, Monica shared her experience uh, using Flipgrid days of the week, activities for each day, schedules of verb gusta. And here's another comment, I will continue using it for open-ended questions so that students can listen to others' thoughts and the comments on them, if they agree or disagree and why. Uh, another comment from Cynthia, Flipgrid could be used for waterfall activities where students answer questions and post new ones for the next person. Uh, finally, I used it the first week of classes for students to introduce themselves and they really liked it as an icebreaker. So those are some of the comments and one question from the last part. Of sure, the so, thank you. So let me respond. First of all, uh, Cynthia, I totally agree. In fact, my, my vision for the exchange between Cassie and um, um, oh, I'm forgetting his name already. Uh, the parents uh, in Flipgrid, where they're asking each other questions, is to, is to keep on asking different questions. They're just doing memorized chunks and, and doing this. And I have done this in, in other cases. Um, I, I skipped over one example where I was showing a bargaining activity where I am offering a series of questions and then upping the ante and saying, oh no, I won't go any cheaper. And then you have to have a strategy to go further with this. So you can do this as a teacher or you can have the students um, uh, do this. So that's, that's wonderful. Um, in terms of, of Padlet, uh, it, it's a great way uh, as an icebreaker, and it feels more interactive to my mind than a discussion forum. Discussion forums are, would be better if you want to have very extensive um, uh, chunks of, te uh, of text, at least for Chinese, uh, because characters are so, so small, you can write a good amount of text and not have it take so much space. But if you're writing Western languages, it may take up more space in a discussion forum, maybe better. But the visual element is appealing. And um, one thing I forgot to mention, in all of my Padlets, I, I try to have some sort of visual image. So I just found some quick clip art or um, images, you know, showing kids doing chores, or, you know, I have the little clip art of, of the brooms and such just as ways to get people thinking and to make it feel more inviting in some ways. So, so um, these are helpful. Um, it's uh, great for just some basic tasks, as, as Monica is saying, that you're doing activities for the, for the day, days of the week, you know, learning how to use Gustav or I like, etc. Um, and, and, and these and these sorts of things. So I have another task for you. 
So um, I want everyone to open up this Padlet. And I want to make sure that you know how to upload a picture. And I'll walk through this with you if you need. And to do this little show and tell activity. So let me pull up that screen for you. OK. Um, so again, click on the plus sign. Or if, I think most of you have figured out if you just double click, you'll, you'll have the window open. And then to, 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 to upload an image, um, all you have to do is click the, this little upload button, and then you can click a, a file. And you can see how I've already uh, chosen this picture that I've already posted there. So what I want you to do is just find a picture of yourself or something that you want to share. And this is just a very, very basic activity and write something about it in your target language this time. I did it both in Chinese and English so that you could read it. Um, but write something that just, you know, here's a picture of, of the sunset I took in Hawaii six months ago and write it in, in, in Italian or Spanish or Arabic or something. Um, just so you can have the experience of, of uploading a picture. So work on that as I, as I move on talking about other, other things. And... Um, let me just show one other thing with Padlets. Thanks, I see some th things are coming up. I'll return to the screen in a second. I also try to do Padlets with other interactive uh, tasks. Um, I'm sorry, that wasn't it. Hold on one second. This is it. Um, so I actually use an app-based uh, um, an app based game. Unfortunately, I may need to, to give it up because this is a, a whole game based app that's designed for different languages. And I'm showing you the Chinese one about how to deal with a deadly pandemic that has hit a college campus. And this was actually designed by by staff peoples at castles at the University of Oregon. And they're using actual locations at the University of Oregon. And I used this a couple of years ago with our eighth graders. Now, right now we're living in a pandemic and this doesn't seem like we were already talking enough about COVID and to talk about a deadly, an even more deadly disease and how you're going to escape from your, your, your dormitory may or may not be the, the, the best thing to do right now, but this is what I, I've done with it. So with these Padlets, because there's a lot of language here that that's, is, is quite advanced, Students could go through and just simply click on, on the, their, their responses. So here we have a scene where, where your friend Jeremy um, um, has run up to you and he's like, hey guys, we have to get out of here. There's a deadly pandemic and what are we going to do? And um, I, I know we don't have a lot of time, and, but, but you know, um, are, are you ready? Let's get out of here. And then if you look at the, the right-hand side, there's three choices. And then your response is gonna be, wait, wait, I need to get a few things first. That's first response. Second response is like, I'm ready. Let's quickly get out of here. Let's, let's make a move on it. And then the third response is, um, I just want to hang out here and I'm going to Jingguan Chi Bian. And this is something that the students probably don't know what it is. So what I've done at the bottom is I've provided glosses for them. So I've, I've given them words they might not, not know. So like the, the characters for Xin Xi information or to explain Jie Shi, And I've even showed the, the, the pinyin for this. And then I finally given a different definition of Jingguan Chi, Chi Bian. The third choice is I'm gonna just wait, I'm just gonna, um, I'm. What does one? I plan to just stay here a bit and wait and see what happens. And then when the students click on here, then there's another situation. So this is a tricky thing. Anyone can go play this game and just click on things and you can see what, what happens next without engaging in the language. So what I've done is if you look in the top um, right hand corner, I say, this is your task. Please open up a Google Doc write a short paragraph explaining what which choice you made, which of those three choices, and then write three or four sentences explaining what happened, okay? Because everyone's gonna have a different choice in the game and you're not gonna see what, what's happened in the other choices. Um, and you can guess that the person who decided to wait things out probably didn't, things didn't go well for them. The idea is like, okay, you need to, to find your way out of the dorm. Um, and then uh, please share um, let's see, what did I say here? Um, and, and then afterwards, please share with the class when we come back what happened so that we can have an interesting discussion. So that the students do this task at home, they wrote their paragraph, and then in class the next day, I would ask everyone, okay, whoever, which of you decided, wait, wait, I'm going to grab some things, the first response. Okay, tell us why you made that choice. Now tell us what happened next. And so a, a, a number of kids were able to respond in a 
conversation in class. Then I said, okay, the, this, the, the next group, who said, I'm ready, let's get out of here, quick. Then they had to, to do a spoken uh, task as well based on what they had written for homework. So here I'm using the Padlets um, to provide more information for the students for the app-based game that they're, that they're doing. And then in other cases, I've even given them other tasks. Um, I forget which screen it was. Give me one moment here. Um, in this example, I, I even given them other tasks to say, you need to fill out a Google form based on your response. Okay, so if you picked uh, the first answer, go to this first Google form. If you pick the second one, go to this Google form. And that, there's another level that I'm using G Suite documents to, to gain answers where they're not sharing this time. I could have had them write their answers in the Padlet and everyone would share, but here I wanna do something that's a little bit more discreet and be able to give feedback without sharing with everyone. So I did this all in the Padlet and also giving more information about um, uh, you know, things that, 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 that would be needed. Um, here, I didn't have to gloss anything because the language was pretty simple, okay? So uh, think of, of ways that you can use Palette to support other activities that you're doing with, an, with as I, I've shown here, with an app-based game. Okay, um, I'm gonna go back to my show and tell. Perfect, thank you so much for your pictures, okay? So, oh, we've got a lot, great. You're already already great at this. So thank you for sharing. So something you can do with your, with your students is also a warm up activity. So you know again either online or everyone in the classroom just share a picture that's you know that you want to share of, of something interesting about yourself or have a more discreet question. What did you something fun you did over the weekend or um, some interesting news you you found. It depends on their 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 uh, their um, uh, performance level, what level of class, what, what sort of things that you want them to do um, because. My can-do statement was just simply, my can-do was I wanted to get you to, to show you knew how to upload a picture or can write something in, in the language of, of your choice. And we, we see here examples of, of French and Spanish and, and, and Arabic and, and such, okay, Chinese as well. Okay, so thank you for participating in that. All right, um, any questions to share? Let me look at the chat. I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. Okay, no, no questions. Okay, let me move back to my PowerPoint. We only have about 15 minutes because I've been doing quite a bit of talking, but the, the next things I'm just gonna be sharing, um, showing you more things rather than doing uh, extensive tasks. So give me a moment back to here again. Wait a minute, I've lost my, my PowerPoint. Did I close it? Not showing up. Give me one moment again. Try this one more time. There we go. Now it's showing. And then we go back here, play from current slide. Okay, moving on. So the, the, the last three things I wanted to show you um, our Jamboard, and I'll just show you a couple examples of this very quickly. So Jamboard is a fairly new G Suite tool where you can use this as a whiteboard, but that which can be a whiteboard that can be interactive. So already Zoom has a whiteboard function that if you're do, having a fully online synchronous class, you can pull that up and, and actually use that as your, your, your uh, digital blackboard or whiteboard, okay? Um, however, with Jamboard, you can actually share the documents so students can open it up on their own devices, or if they are using their computer, they could have open it up on a tablet, and then even interact together with this. They're easy to share because they're, they're, Google, um, they're Google Docs, essentially, just a different form. And uh, Jamboard was, was originally designed to use with hardware so that if you were in a classroom, you could actually be writing on the whiteboard in the same way that you might use with, a, with a, one of those old fashioned smart boards. But if you have a tablet or if your students have a tablet, you can use this as well. It doesn't work quite as well as on a desktop um, uh, computer. 
Um, and it, it's just uh, really useful for any kind of online tools. I've given you a task, but we pr probably won't have time for this. So let me just demo this in a moment. But in the meantime, I just want to share the other tools I'm going to be, be showing, um, uh, namely exam.net, which is a tool I just discovered back in June that this is an online assessment uh, platform that's free to use through the end of the year as long as you're an educator outside of Sweden. If you, it's, it's, it's because it's, it was designed by um, a Swedish company, they're charging for it in Sweden. And it looks like they're gonna be start charging for it for um, uh, all people starting in 2021. Also easy to share with your class. And if you wanted to have a, a synchronous session, you could monitor um, student performance and I'll show you how this could work. And you can even add on a webcam element to it. Um, I haven't experimented with this, but there are instructions within the site. And then I would consider using this even for formative tasks. And I say this because when um, I give students writing tasks, regardless if they're in uh, middle school or high school, and I'm sure with your college students as well, there's an over-reliance on using Google Translate or um, online dictionaries. And sometimes we wanted to see what can our students do without any supports. We just say, okay, we're gonna have a free write and you have to do this without using any tools. Just show me what you can do. And this is a way you could do a formative assessment, ungraded assessment to, to wean students away from constantly looking things up on their own. Okay, and then you can actually use this to support support speaking tasks. So I forgot who was asking if we use Flipgrid for um, for for spoken um, test. You could use Exam.net as something that's a bit more secure to to to, to make sure that your students are looking things up on the side or 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 um, you're actually monitoring them in live time. Okay, all right. So I just wanted to share that. Now let me let me. Stop sharing and go back to the browser so I can show you how these work again. Okay, back here and whoops. Okay, and let me switch windows real quick. Give me one more second. Oh, sorry, uh, here we go. All right, so he, here is an example of Jamboard. I'll show you uh, some uses of Jamboard first, and, uh, and then uh, I'll show a little bit of exam.net. So what I've done here is um, I've just created a whiteboard that I can use in a number of different ways. I can first share this with you. So if I go ahead and click share and copy the link I'm going to put this into the chats. Give me one second. Done here. Go back into the chat. And you can open this up on your own device or on your own computer. Okay. So that, oh, I'm not showing Jamboard. Sorry. Okay. Let me, thank you for letting me know. Let me look again. Let me get the right screen. Okay, is that showing correctly? Yes. Thank you yes. so much. Sorry, this is one of the, the challenges of, of trying to run all sorts of different screens showing different tools all at one time. Okay, so here's our, our, our Jamboard. I've shared the link with you in the chat and I can see a number of you are joining and looking at your own. Um, you can go ahead and um, use sticky notes. Oh, and I realized I, I left something out. I forgot to show you Lino. I'll come back and show you that in a second. But I'm using sticky notes to write different, uh, uh, different notes here. So I'm going to add Italian here because I want to show off my wonderful Italian as well. Buongiorno tutti. Okay. And then I hit save. And here it is. And I have a, a, a new one added. And then I can resize it so that we have this as well. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I, I don't know how to write any Arabic. Um, I could write in French. I could, I could go on with this. Okay. Now you should all be able to do this as well. So go ahead and try to, to add your own sticky note to this and see if you can add a note to this in your own screen. Okay. I'm going to move on in my presentation, but, but feel free to play around with that. Now, um, what I have, um, have been using this for, and I'm showing an example for um, if I were teaching an AP Chinese class for high school students, and I, 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 I um, you know, taught advanced level Chinese at, at high school, where I want to, to, to 
prepare students for being able to do story narration. So once again, um, my can-do statement is to be able to narrate a story, first orally, where you're able to um, describe what's happened in a series of panels. So, in, and, and I'm actually using an, an actual test example from the AP Chinese test, where there's four pictures and you have to describe what's going on in them in the form of a paragraph, um, uh, a paragraph or a series of paragraphs with a clear beginning, middle, or the end. So uh, here I, on, on the yellow, I, I say, please take a look at this picture and start a story. And then in the blue stickies, I say, what are the names of these people? What is their relationship to each other? What are they doing right now? So I want the uh, the students to, to 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 start a story and say, "Here is Xiao Ming with her friends Yue Han and and Xiao Bai, and they are eating lunch at a Chinese restaurant." Okay, they are friends. Um, they are friend. Uh, they are friend. They are. I'm making this up on the fly. There are there eleventh graders at our school. OK, so I, I do this to scaffold for our students to just not just simply describe they are eating in a Chinese restaurant without telling a story, their names and their their relationships. OK, so I have this in one one slide. Then I, I the next task is for students to practice speaking in class again, either online or in, in the classroom after they finish eating. What happened next? And then what happened next? next and then finally what happened please explain how the situation was resolved so we've gone through the steps in class where they are 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 doing this and i've i've done this in a way that i can share this with everyone and then um if i were doing this in a zoom session i could say okay now i'm going to pair you into groups you have the the slides on your own you don't have to look at my zoom presentation anymore you're able to to look at this on your own device you can practice on your own in pairs, and then we'll come back and check with each other. So this is this having this interactive um, whiteboard gives so much more flexibility in terms of supporting tasks when you're putting kids into groups, whether it's um, in the traditional classroom in physical groups, socially distanced, or in a, uh, a virtual environment when you're in a Zoom session. Much, much uh, easier. Much, much easier. Okay, um, very quickly, because we're running out of time. Um, I want to show you exam.net and how I would extend this activity. So with exam.net, you create a teacher portal, you create exams, and then remember, this doesn't necessarily have to be a graded exam. It could be something that's a, a formative assessment. You'll have your, your list of exams. And I'm going to go ahead and show this to you. So here's the exam I've done. So I'm, I'm going to begin the exam, and it's previewing what the experience is like. When I begin this, my screen is going to take up the full screen, and um, I am going to be taking this exam. So at the top, I can move the bar up and down. One second while I do this. I've actually gone ahead and provided the, the, the full prompt directly from the AP test and said, these four pictures present a story. And this is exactly what they would see if they were taking this test. And this is the experience they would have if the students were taking the AP test. They would have a screen where they would have to start typing in Chinese. So then the students look at the pictures, they practice this already. Now they have to write their own story. Um, so I'm going to start doing this, except my, my bar is blocking my my Chinese mode, so I'm not going to do it in Chinese, but I'll just type in English first. Um, so, Xiao, whoops, I can't type. Here we go. Try again. So, Xiao Ming is at a restaurant and typing away. Okay. Now, here's the interesting thing. If I, you might not be able to see this, if I exit full screen and try to open up a new tab, and I'm going to go to Google Translate and say, I don't remember how to say this, that you, you as a teacher are going to, get, going to get an alert. We're saying Adam Ross has left his screen and they're going to be locked out of that screen. So you as a teacher will automatically know if someone is cheating or not. And then they're going to have to request or you're going to have to reach out to them and say, Adam, what's going on? Are you having a problem. And then, and then they might say, oh, I accidentally uh, clicked out of the screen. Can you let me back in? And then you can decide whether to let them back in again. You might say, okay, please make sure you're not using Google Translate. I'm letting you back in and they can complete the task. Um, and you can go on and um, uh, 
sur survey them in, a, in many different ways. You can set a timer for them. Um, you might, if, if you're in a Zoom session, you might uh, orally say, okay, everyone, you have two minutes left, finish up. And then after two minutes, you can click for submission and then it closes the, the, um, th the test for everyone. And then you can decide what to do with that, whether you're doing this for a grade, it's an actual final exam for the class, or you're just doing some sort of formative assessment. Okay, we obviously don't have time to walk through all of this, but I wanted to share that this is a tool you might want to experiment using. And I suggest um, using it first, again, just for some practice activities in class, so students get used to this experience, and then consider whether this will be something to support you um, in your own classes. Okay, um, we're at 825, so I'll stop there. Um, I was going to talk about um, um, talk about Lino actually, and I was going to show you a screen. Um, you can experiment it with yourself. It's pretty easy to use, but just know using that for sticky notes is is going to be the, the 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 best thing, and not use it for uploading pictures or, or videos because it, it doesn't work quite as well. And I'll just do a quick check in the chat if there's any other questions. I think there's one question from Pierre about how different is uh, Jamboard from Google Doc, and then followed by Travis and Kuze about test security. They were saying, basically, it's sure. very easy to monitor them if they have their phones around and other other things. True. So this might be um, uh, an example of where you may maybe want to investigate the webcam feature so that you, you're, you're looking to see that, t that students aren't using Google Translate on their phone uh, to, to double check that. You may have to establish some more protocols. Um, but if it's timed, you can also, um, I believe, see if actually students are typing. Um, you may say to them, please type continuously for just pardon me, 10 minutes, this might be a free write activity. Say, just, just type away um, and, and, and if you're stuck, find a way to circumlocute, just move on so that they're, they're practicing that sort of thing. So that when they're actually taking the test, you can actually monitor if they're, if they're, if they're using it, okay? But it, it probably would need a little bit more time. Um, uh, Pierre was asking, uh, I think, how is Jamboard Google uh, uh, different from a Google Doc? It's a pr it's a presentation board, and you can actually write on it. And I didn't show some of the features where you can actually um, have a laser and you can circle some things, and it'll disappear. There's some cool tools that that are all laid out on the left hand side, and you can play with them, and, it, and it's it's pretty easy to figure out. Okay. Um, I was requested to share a link with you. Um, Susan may have shared this with you already, but there's um, a evaluation for this session via a Google form. So I'm going to put this into the the chat. So feel free to um, to start working on that. And then finally, let me just go back and share one more time. Give me one sec while I juggle through things. Share screen. Oh, I know what I did. Here we go. Okay. All right. And then just to share with you my final um, uh, screen, um, I have created a tiny URL for you. I'll copy this into the chat in a moment that I have a number of resources for you, as well as a link to these slides. Um, as well as my contact information. So please feel free to be in contact with me if you want to follow up with any of these tools or even share with me something that you've done and, and have commentary. I'm, I'm happy to help and I'll, I'll try to reply as quickly as possible. Um, and then I have other um, uh, videos and, and sh uh, short videos and things to read to give you more ideas for using different tools or with exam.net, there's, um, there's a page which will walk you through uh, some of the features that obviously I didn't have time to, to, to go through. So all of these there are available in this tinyurl.com from SOS to AOK, and I'll share this in the link. And there's my email address as, as well, a underscore Ross at case.org. Um, so um, thank you for, for, for um for joining me. I'm happy to stay on for as long as you want to, to, to answer more questions as we go along. And I'm going to share these, these links with you. Give me one second. I shall just tighten. Here we go. Give me one moment.
and there you go. There's a tiny URL and, and my email address if you want to copy them and paste them elsewhere. Or just go ahead and click on the link and you have all that information in the, in the doc. Okay, I finished on time. I think I got in through everything except skipping over the one screen about Lino. So thank you thank all you. again. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure I'm saying on behalf of my colleagues, uh, we have learned so much. I think especially the pedagogical aspect. I think the, the thing I learned a lot is about the, 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 the activities you created, the topics you chose. I think they, they're like how to reduce their stress. Uh, talking about what they, they, they view uh, their favorite uh, soap opera or a movie and what responsibility should they play at home. I think in order for the student to be actively engaged, I think the pedagogical aspect, the choosing the right topic and using the right uh, scaffolding is so much important. I think that's why I, at the beginning I said, Adam is one of us and he has taught foreign languages uh, for 30 years. I, I think I can see that. I think someday maybe we should create uh, a place where we can share the ped pedagogical ideas. I, I think that the last activity, activity is which is totally integrated into uh, AP Chinese. Uh, so I have to think about the integration, the, the connection between the technology-based activities and the, how it fits to our curriculum and the different units. I think that's the part I, I really enjoyed. Uh, do other colleagues have any co final comments or questions before we leave? Yep, I, I wonder, yes, uh, Wang Lao from OSU. I, I wonder if you ever um, taught a class that half of them in the physical classroom, the other half was online. Actually, I haven't. All of our, our, our teachers are, are about, actually, let me rephrase that. All of our middle school teachers at our school are, are, are currently starting to do that or will start doing this on, on Monday. But I myself have not. I've just been supporting them with a lot of the technology for this. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it is tricky. We actually are working um, so that if students have to be home because they're ill or they're, they're quarantining, that we have a swivel camera that will follow their teachers for the days that they should be in class for the the classroom learning and then for their off days we have the teachers preparing on our, via our LMS and via yet another tool that I, I've done presentations on called Seesaw that works well for younger learners I'm not sure if it would work well for college students um, to be able to share videos and written files in a very interactive way so all these tools are, are, are working well to support um, our teachers and students with this, you know, very refined hybrid model. It's a lot of work for the teachers and I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to them, but, it, but yeah. you know, that said, it seems to be working well for our, our kids, all things considered. Yeah, that's the most challenging situation we run into because uh, on technical part, uh, student in class, their voice, you know, we not, we're not well equipped off of all the classes, only a few of them has all the mic everywhere. So students' voice will be very dim for the online audience. And yeah, the we'll teacher's the, challenge yeah. is it has to, you know, to to pay attention to both sides. And that's, that's real challenge for us. Now, on, all online or all in classroom seems okay. But if the class size is not huge, the other question is, you know, how did you ever deal with like 100 student online. So let me let me comment again. I'm seeing a, a reference to high flex, and this might be a, a protocol that you're using in Ohio that I'm not familiar with. But we're but we're essentially we're doing a this hybrid model where we're creating a series of, of tasks that are that are are working to support in class learning, and then also a series of tasks that are completely asynchronous. So that that as I mentioned, our middle school students are Monday at school, Tuesday off, Monday at school, Thursday or excuse me, Wednesday at school. 
Thursday off and alternating or just the, the other way around. And then they're, they're following those tasks depending on if they're in the in-class or the asynchronous. And that, that seems to be working well so far for our sixth graders who've been back for, they just finished their fifth day right now. And then as I said, our seventh and eighth graders are gonna be coming back on Monday and Tuesday half class at a time to do the same sort of hybrid. So I don't know if that's similar to what you're, you're saying for your high flex model, but that's what's working for us. In terms of, of using the, the swivel camera, this is going to, going to be supporting kids if they are sick because of their cold or they're quarantining, they can still see what's happening in, in their classroom days when they have to be at home. Yeah, the Wait. Canyon will have three type of classes, the in-person, the high flex, thank you, Jose, for the explanation. High flex is basically the idea of having students in the classroom and remotely at the same time. The third type is remote teaching. Uh, we have a discussion in our department and also uh, beyond. And uh, we find the, the, the second type, as Wang Lao was describing, is the most difficult, as in Pierre also uh, mentioned, the high flex, the most challenging among the three types of classes. Uh, we, are, we are five minutes over. Uh, feel free to leave. I think uh, it, it looks like th there might be some additional questions. I know Adam has to leave soon. Maybe an, we can stay for another 10 minutes. Is, is that okay? I'm happy to, yeah. Yeah, so for people who have to leave, you can leave. Uh, please uh, spend, I, I think it's less than five minutes to, to finish the evaluation. But for other pe uh, people who have additional questions, we can stay for another 10 minutes. Uh, okay, any? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I, maybe I missed that, um, but I was thinking, so how do you, how do you uh, grade? Because sometimes that's something we need to do. Uh, so how do you grade if the students are using uh, Padlet and how do you grade if the students are using um, flip grid or you don't use it in that way? So actually most of the time I'm, I, I use flip grid as, as more formative assessment. Um, I, I want the kids to be building their skills rather than worrying about, oh my God, I have to get a, a, get a grade. And in fact, I, I didn't have time to talk about this, but I found that a lot of my students would prepare a text and would just sit there and just read. And, and they say, no, that's not what I want you to do. I want you to, to prepare a text and then be able to talk about it in your own words and I even tell them, I, 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 I've, I've talked about this another time to say, I want you to look directly at the camera and not even look at your screen or look at your piece of paper. Talk to me as, or pretend you're talking to me or your audience via the screen um, to do those sorts of things. So I, I'm, I'm taking kids out of their comfort zone to say, okay, I'm not gonna use my piece of paper. I may have prepared what I wanna have, have, have written. And I've been scaffolding, having kids writing out text like in the Padlet for the soap opera and then coming into class and then being able to, to narrate things. Um, and then at some point I would probably do an in-person OPI um, you know, either virtually for my online classes or um, with um, uh, in the classroom. When I say OPI, I, I'll do an inter a mock OPI. It's not going to be a full OPI, but ask some various questions and say, okay, you need to narrate stuff that you saw before, and, and that's going to be the graded activity, but not necessarily something that they would do on a, on a task. Using these tools is lots and lots of practice so that then when they're actually doing the graded thing, it's like, oh, I've done this already. It's no, no big deal. They won't be nervous about it. Thank you. Absolutely. And Any other questions? Heard. Questions, comments? Did it happen to you that some student just refused to turn on the camera? Yeah, this is a tricky one. Um, we as, as our school have had a policy saying that for the, the, the synchronous classes online, we want students to be on camera and they're with each other. Um, for the, for the, the, the Flipgrid activities, um, I've gotten more lenient about this because some students just you know, really don't want to look at themselves or share, share their videos. So I said that if you do that, then you need to at least you know, complete the task um, and just have a blank screen or, or something. Um, and then that, that's fine. I, I, this is something I think you need to negotiate with your students about what's comfortable for them. But, but it, it, we've taken the policy for live classes. We don't want kids doing this. We're just looking at their forehead, which they, they will gladly do. Um, we, we want them present in the class, um, to, you know, at least what we, for the, the past six months of distance learning. 
as much as possible. And um, that's worked well. But for flip grids, because the, the, the often middle school students can feel uncomfortable or feel self-conscious and we let them decide how they want to present themselves. See, Pierre just put in the text, um, would you have a recorded class in which you use the tools? Um, actually, I have some older ones from my online class. I'd have to go back and, and, and look to see what's there. I haven't looked at them in a few, in a few years. I might be able to make a, a snip of, of it and, and share with you. So let me, let me take a look and, and maybe I can share with, uh, um, with Susan or Professor Bai to share with all of you later. Yes. 11.48, uh, thank you again. Thank I think uh, Adam has another interesting activity after this. What kind of books are you reading? Is that a book reading activity? Oh, I, I do. I, I take part in an online book club. Um, I lived in Seattle for many years and a friend of mine uh, runs outside of, uh, from Seattle a book club. And most of the people are from Seattle, but there's people from all over the place. So we're reading Toni Morrison's Beloved. Um, I'm behind on my reading, but I'll take, place in, uh, take part in the book club all the same. Wonderful. I think that's another good idea to how to create some fun activities to create the sense of learning community among the students. I think that's something we uh, try to do also here. Absolutely. Uh, thank you again. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, thank you so for much. hosting. This was a lot of fun. Bye-bye. Mm, okay, bye-bye.